The first idea that we'll start our discussion from is the notion of an ideal gas. Ideal gas is the simplest possible um, model of matter. Historically, thinking and experimenting to understand the behavior of an ideal gas gave the metaphorical steam to the first industrial revolution in the early 19th century. For example, the analysis of the Carnot engine was key to mechanical automation. 200 years later, in the 21st century, many of the early ideas of thermodynamics were, are widely applied to molecular sciences and engineering, and even the ideal gas model is still used as a point of reference. What is an ideal gas? Ideal gas is a collection of particles in a container. In this movie, the container walls are only shown in the back. I'll draw the box to make it a little more visible. Let's see. It goes something like this. Right, so we have our simulation box. <laughs> All right, I'm doing this. Okay, I got this. We have our box and there's the top of the wall. And okay, so we have a, a swarm of blue particles that are uh, moving around in the container. This is actually a um, the simplest possible molecular dynamic simulation. All that's happening here is that particles have uh, velocities and they uh, bounce back from the walls. So um, <clears throat> the ideal gas particles move around in space without interacting with each other. That's why I'm saying it's the simplest possible model of any kind of matter. Uh, they do not attract each other, they do not repulse each other, and they can literally pass through each other. They can occupy the same space. Now, that's a, a bit of an approximation, uh, and they're kind of acting like ghosts. This is why I have the ghost diagram here. Uh, just to uh, instill the image of the ideal gas particle as uh, uh, as as it as an entity that can uh, occupy the same space with uh, with its neighbors, so it turns out that because collisions uh, between molecules in the gas phase are so rare, assuming that they never collide is not such a bad idea, and it simplifies the math in very considerable ways. So uh, that's why we really like the ideal gas model. We can learn a lot from it, and the math. Uh, because the math is uh, simple, but we do have to make those uh, um, minor uh, minor uh, assumptions about what's going on inside there. But that's okay. So the particles do collide with the walls. So if you uh, watch any one of them approaching the wall, you'll see that it will start moving backwards um, following that collision. Um, the pressure is something that we're um, all familiar with. We know what pressure looks like. Now, as scientists, uh, we always want to understand things uh, from the very basics. And so we're going to use this model to look at the microscopic origins of the phenomenon of pressure. So using this simulation movie, we can try to understand the origins of the, uh, our gas behavior. Gas is known for exerting pressure on the walls of the container, right? So let's try to track this to the microscopic or rather nanoscopic behaviors of our gas particles. Let's make a couple of assumptions. Actually, uh, let's make a couple of observations. Like we said, we have uh, ghostly particles that bounce off the walls of a container elastically. In elastic collisions, the kinetic energy is preserved. So the particles bounce back and all that happens is that their momenta reverse sign and they start moving uh, in the opposite direction. So the collective bombardment of uh, gas particles on the walls of the container gives rise to the pressure of the gas that we can measure in uh, an experiment. Pressure is simply the force due to collisions divided by the area of the, of the surface of the wall. With this simple model in mind, let's find a mathematical expression for pressure we'll see that we'll find an equation that contains all the information about our gas. We'll call this equation the equation of state. Okay, let's see how we get the ideal gas law from very simple arguments. 
Let's take a box container filled with ideal gas. Have the volume, temperature, and the number of particles fixed. If our container is cubic with the side L, the volume is just L cubed, and the area of one side is L squared. The particles of ideal gas are non-interacting, which means we can simplify our calculations. We'll analyze one particle first, and then simply apply statistics to find out what many of such particles will do. Let's start over. Here's the container, but this time we've removed all the particles except for one. And now there's one particle there bouncing back and forth between these two uh, walls. For simplicity, we'll assume that it's confined to bouncing back and forth along the x direction, which means that the y and z components of its velocity are set to zero. When we put all the particles back into this container, the pressure will be equal on all sides. And so it doesn't, it won't make a difference which side we consider in our calculation. So let's pick one, this one, and call it side number one. So overall, we would like to find out just how much pressure does this one molecule exert on side number one of this container. Let's do this calculation. The pressure is defined as the force divided by the area on which it acts. In this case, the area of side number one is L squared, and the force using the Newton's second law is simply the mass of the particle times acceleration. What is, an accel uh, what is acceleration? Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. The time that we'll use for the sake of an argument is twice the time it takes for the particle to cross the box of length TL. The time between collisions with walls is called the time of flight. For elastic collisions with immovable walls, the velocity of the particle is simply reversed. So the change in velocity is the velocity before collision minus the velocity after. And like we said, the uh, TL is the time it takes to fly from one side to the other, which is the length of the box L divided by the velocity Vx. We'll replace TL with L divided by Vx in our acceleration, rearrange a bit, and get this nice looking expression Vx squared divided by L. Okay, back to pressure. Let's plug this into the formula for pressure, and what do we get? Mm -hmm. mvx squared divided by the volume. Terrific, this is the instantaneous pressure that one molecule exerts on the wall of the container when it collides with it. Now we need to make that statistical argument to find out what happens when there are many molecules like that, flying around, each with its own unique velocity. The statistical argument that we'll make will rely on the equipartition of energy principle. It will give us the relationship between the kinetic energy and temperature. More on this in lecture number two. For now, let's just accept that on average, kinetic energy of one molecule will be equal to kBT divided by two, where kB is the Boltzmann constant and T is the temperature. Now to get the average pressure for one molecule, we replace the MVX squared in our instantaneous pressure with KBT, um, with KBT and we get KB, uh, the pressure is equal to KBT divided by volume. I'll add the subscript 1 to make sure that we remember that we are dealing with only one uh, molecule. To get the expression for many molecules, for n molecules, we we'll sim simply multiply this by n. Okay, now we need to massage things a bit to make our result resemble the gas law that everybody knows, uh, PV equals nRT. To do this, we need to recall the definition of the gas constant R. It's uh, Kb times Na, where Kb is the Boltzmann constant and Na is the Avogadro number. So now we move things around a bit, and there we have it. We have um, just derived the ideal gas law from two arguments. The first argument is that ideal gas molecules bounce back elastically from the wall of the walls of the container and do not interact with each other. The other argument is that the kinetic energy of a whole lot of these molecules, on average, is related to temperature through the Boltzmann constant. Watching.
Interestingly, before the uh, equation of state for an ideal gas was known, in those early days of modern science, several scientists, Boyle, Charles, and Avogadro, made several partial observations regarding the behaviors of gases. The equation of state contains these relationships between, between the volume, pressure, and temperature, and the number of particles, and provides a unifying picture that contains the partial observations in it. So what, if we look, go one by one, Boyle's law tells us that the volume is pro inversely proportional to pressure. Clearly, we have this relationship in, uh, uh, in the ideal gas law. If we divide both sides by pressure, we get volume uh, equal some constant divided by pressure, precisely this. Charles' law tells us the volume is proportional to temperature. Clearly, this relationship is captured by the ideal gas law, and the Avogadro law establishes the relationship between the uh, volume and the number of particles. Again, it's all captured under one roof uh, by the ideal gas law.